Hey guys, good evening. Let me go ahead and share the screen with you. And thank you very much for joining today. Just give it a moment here. Um, yes, ahorita estoy. Ya, ahí está. Thank you. Okay, so, well, good evening, guys, and thank you very much for joining today. We're going to be um, working this week with uh, section number three, right? Last week, we were able to complete sections um, one and two. Some of you, right, have already um, started, you know, working on the midterm test, right? And, and um, I guess you have some questions, but no worries, I'll take care of them today. Give me a moment. I'm going to open up the list, the attendance. Okay, let's see. There we go. And the list since it is in uh, google drive it it you know takes a while um when i open it up but it's here comencemos entonces con la lista chicos today is uh march the 6th right and let's see alba dir portal Díaz. present thank you alejandra elizabeth mendoza arias Present. Thank you. Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Ana Francisca. Eh, Claudia Marcela Linares Surquilla. Present. Thank you. Diego Anthony Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you. Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. Francisco Antonio Sánchez Ovel, Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán, eh, José Carlos Rodríguez Linares, José Francisco Peña Peña, Present. Thank you, José Isaías Portillo Ramos, Present teacher. Thank you, José Jovito Torres Amaya. Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present, Jovito. Ah, ok, thank you, Jovito. Then Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Eh, María Susena Ayala Flores. Eh, Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ibis Méndez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you. Rafael Antonio Morales Martínez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Meléndez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa María de Milagro Pérez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, eh, Jensi Marlene Lo León López. And Zulma Beatriz Pérez Gardames. Present. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so welcome and thank you very much for joining today. This is our session number five, week number two, and today is March 6th. Well, for this particular, um, you know, um, section, right, we're going to talk a little bit about a very interesting topic, right, which is uh, defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? And um, generally, it's important, right, for us to know how we use it, Right, and also um, the different, you know, uh, situations where we um, need to add commas, where we need to just uh, add that extra information. So we're going to, you know, um, talk a little bit about that. Let me see, I'm going to open here up the other info. Uh, I think, Let's see. 
Okay, very good. So let me close here the attendance and I'm going to have the information ready. Okay, so now guys, if we go to your manual, because actually there's a manual, right? I really hope that some of you are, you know, um, reviewing the information that we have in the manual because I'll be more than happy to go ahead and answer questions regarding, you know, um, that specific unit. And um, there are some things that probably we, we do not check directly here, right? But uh, you have it on your manual. So I'm going to show you the introduction or the reading for the introduction in your manual. Okay, so it says cities of the worlds, right? So the unit that we're working on, it's exploring new cities, um, popular destinations, right? So um, there are many destinations all over the world. And I bet that some of you have, you know, that place where you would like to go. So here we have the instruction, right? So starting point, it says read about these cities. Which city would you must like to visit, right? Which city would you most like to visit? So we have four different cities over here. Please, I'm going to read it. Take a look at the vocabulary, right? And let me know if you have questions. And la razón por la que voy a leer yo es porque está un poco borroso. Entonces no sé es que, que con qué calidad se vea en su pantalla. So I'm going to read it. But if you can follow me with your site, that would be wonderful. So Barcelona, right? Barcelona is famous for museums, nightlife, and seafood. And for the architect, Antoni Gaudi, I think it's in Spanish, right? Who designed several of the city's most distinctive buildings, right? The restaurants here stay open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. As you know, in Spain, right, they wake up... Um, I, I, I don't want to say late because it's kind of, you know, relative, but their day, right, begins very late. Uh, I mean, early in the, uh, very late in the morning, I'm sorry. It's kind, kind of the opposite here because in El Salvador, for example, if you walk on the streets at 5 a.m., you will see lots of people already waiting for the bus, already, um, you know, going to their... Um, workplace, right, etc. But in Barcelona, right, um, everything begins like at 10 a.m. in the morning, right? And they go to, bed, go to bed very late. Also, they take a break in the afternoon because they take a nap and then they go back to, to their businesses and actually they close very night. And that's the reason why they wake up very uh, late, uh, you know, the next day. Then we have the next city, which is Beijing, right? Beijing has many popular tourist attractions, which include the Great Wall of China, the Summer Palace, and the Forbidden City. Tourists who come here for the first time are amazed by the crowds, the busy streets, and the constantly changing skyline. The next city, well, actually it's not, I don't know if it's over here, Kisa, Sydney. The place where most tourists go first in Sydney is the famous opera house. But this Australian city also has great restaurants and museums. The spring and fall are the season when most people come to visit. And the last city, Seoul. Right, Seoul is well known for its spicy food and its shopping areas, where you can find everything from antique pottery to custom-made clothing. The Mayum Don area has dozens of shops that sell the latest fa fashions. So we have four different cities, guys. Which city would you like to visit from the ones that we have here? Which city would you like to visit? Barcelona, Beijing, Sydney, Seoul, and why? Anyone volunteer to yeah. tell me? Uh huh. Yeah. I I was in Seoul. Oh the, really? In the two times in twenty nine in 
2019. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And how and was it? I mean, for training in my world. world. Oh, mm -hmm. wonderful. And, and, and tell me. No, make John Dan. Uh huh. Shop and make it. Este, we, we can buy uh, make it. Make it. Mm -hmm. and, and, Ah, where muchas cosas. Many and things. I know, many things. Uh -huh. And I know the old city, old city, the palace, the palace, and in the kimchi, the spice food is kimchi. Spice food, yes. I have heard a lot about kimchi. I have never tried before, right? But actually, one of the, the things that would be, you know, very interesting at least to me will be the food right it's i'm not you know with rice with rice lots of rice lots of, yes okay excellent well so you already visited one of these uh cities um sandra and 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 that sounds wonderful i mean i i one day i would like to have the chance you know to go to uh, Seoul, right? It's very famous, and I bet it has many, many, uh, you know, beautiful places to visit. So thank you very much. Yes, it's tell me. I'm sorry. Building, buildings in the I I was in the tower sky, mm -hmm. tower sky, with the hundred what hundred um twenty one floor floors. Wow. Floor. Really? Mm -hmm. The floor? Floor. floor. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, a skyscraper, I think it's a name. Mm -hmm. Skyscraper. Um, mm -hmm. Those are, you know, tall buildings, right? And in mm -hmm. this case, let's go ahead and see in Seoul. Mm -hmm. It says here, ah, Lotte World Tower. Is that the one that you, yes. you visited? Yes. <gasps> Wow, it's five hundred. Floor is the. How do you say vidrio? Transparent. Ah, uh, yeah, it was a made of glass. In the one hundred eighteen floor. Wow. Is it this one, eh, Sandra? This one? Yes, yes. This. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of. It it looks like if it's it's made of glass, right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's super, super tall. <laughs> well, in my yeah. case, I don't like heights, so I don't know if I would have enjoyed that, but yeah, it looks beautiful. How do you say that? In in Spanish, tell me the word in Spanish. El ascensor. Is ah, the fast. elevator, the elevator. In what menu? What? Oh my yes, goodness, that was yes. fast. Oh my. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Too fast. Imagine one, I'm moving from one floor to the other one in one minute yes. and in one of the tallest buildings in Seoul. No, thank yes. you. You are very brave, <laughs> Sandra. <laughs> 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 yeah, actually, you were. Okay, well, thank you very much for sharing your experience, Sandra. And also, I, I can see that, Eliu, you wanted to participate. So go ahead. Thank you, Sandra. I like to visit Barcelona. Oh, really? Barcelona? Yes. Okay, I why? Like. Tell me. Well, first of all, that I have some relatives living there. Mm -hmm. And my wife and my, my daughter mm -hmm. have visited there. And they... And they told me that it's a beautiful place. Like the description says, the description say here, mm -hmm. there are a lot of restaurants. Uh, they told me about uh, a, a channel that the mm -hmm. water goes through. Uh, the ancient, the ancient, the, 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 in the beginning of the, the, in the history of this place. Really? The, yeah, they, they built the, I don't know if it was Carlo Magno who, 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 who was the, the, that, that person, that um, uh, king or, or emperor that built that, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I, I don't know how to say, canales de, de transporte de agua, yeah. Streams, um, um, 
let me see yeah because actually I was looking for that word um stream of uh, streams of water and uh, I think you're talking about the origin in Barcelona or in Europe itself I mean itself uh, in Barcelona in Barcelona yes they the Mm. In, in Barcelona, that's how, how can I say that um, los son uh, I, I, I don't remember very well, but if uh, it's, a, it's a channel that is built in the in a in a huge uh, uh, in a huge building uh, is is in a huge way a uh, path. Mm -hmm. Built in by cement, 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 and they the water go through that that channel and and make irrigation the the several uh, places on on the on the rural area mm -hmm. to to uh, to grow the vegetable and grow uh, many 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 uh, camping area mm -hmm. the other thing is that is um, it has a um, it is it has a um, sea uh, 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 see i don't know it's a mediterranean sea that is um, near and there are a place that is called la rampa mm -hmm. la rampa and that place uh as we as we see as we saw the news in my period of time, they they have a a, a terrorist that 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 crash people that the tourism mm -hmm. that was making tourism in that place. Mm -hmm. But the ramp is it uh, at is known is a beautiful place. It's a it's a tourism place, and the food and the the other thing is the the seafood is uh, delicious. The seafood and aceite de olive. How can I say aceite de olive? Oil. Olive oil. Oh, uh, yes, that is cheap, cheap, really cheap. And uh, the, the different kind of uh, hams. Um, that is the reason that a lot of restaurants are open at midnight. Um, the people enjoy the weather the what the climate of weather is beautiful too it's um it's not too hot it's not too too cold it's uh, it's like uh the san salvador volcanoes uh, cl climate kind of cool mm -hmm. kind of cool yes mm -hmm. that is the reason that i would like to, to visit and someday i will <laughs> yeah why not right yes the, well, I have heard, right, uh, I mean, good things about Barcelona, as you were saying before, but probably one of the things, uh, it's uh, the mm -hmm. art, right? Uh, I don't know how, how they, you know, pronounce the name, his name in English, but Anthony Gaudi, right? Yes. Wow, his uh, masterpieces are still, you know, standing in Barcelona, and there are many, many places, right, that you can visit there that are very famous because of uh, the colorful, I think they are called tails or mosaic or something like that, mm -hmm. but I mean, it has bright colors, the weather, as you said before, is uh, beautiful, and so many places that you can visit in Barcelona. So thank you yeah. very much for that. And and a lot and a lot thing is that is a, a street is called my second name, my second my second name, my second oh, name really? is Velarde. And yes, there is a, oh, a statue. Like how can you say statue? Statue. Statue. Statue that has a famous personal, a famous person that was for, called my, with my second name. And you, yes. and you know, in, and actually probably that has to do with the origin, right, of some of our yeah. last names too, as, as we all know, right, uh, our last names, you know, probably come from that way, uh, from yeah. that particular region, right, but yes, probably your ancestors, you know, come from Barcelona, yeah. Spain, Elio. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much, guys, for your participation. Anyone else would like to add something? 
Anyone? Rafael. No. No, it's the Rafael. <laughs> okay, very good. So no worries, guys. Actually, um, it's this is just an introduction, right? Uh, because later, you know, in the platform, you will encounter some vocabulary words that right, you need to know, right, for you to be able to complete some exercises about vocabulary regarding cities cities right so also we have now el salvador right and we have um, beautiful you know cities within el salvador that you can visit right and i think we have to become you know um internal tourists right because sometimes we uh, also uh need to know a little bit about our own country right we well in my case for instance i am you know, that type of person who needs to go out a little bit more because uh, I don't know many places in El Salvador. So hopefully one day I'm going to be, you know, uh, checking um, some of the places right uh, over here that are famous, but I haven't visited yet. OK, so this is just an intro, guys. There are some sentences, right, that um, you need to um, go ahead and use as a reference for the topics that we're going to be working on. And one of those is defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? I'm going to put this over here in for a moment. So we are over here, defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? Um, in the book or in the manual, you have this information, but also the platform presents you with, this one is from the manual, this one is from the platform, right? So the platform presents um, these two definitions of defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? Don't worry, actually, it's not something, you know, um, that it's going to be complicated, no, right? All we have to do is to understand the reason why, you know, we have, um, we use them and also when we use them, okay? So we have defining and non-defining relative clauses. Can someone help me to read um, the first definition and the first two examples, please? Okay, me. Okay. Tell you. Yeah. And then Rafael. Uh, defining and not defining relative clauses. A defining relative clauses defines or gives Essential information about a noun. New Orleans is a city where people go to celebrate Mardi Gras. Salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origin to Africa. To Africa. Okay. Thank you so much, Elio. Now let's take a look at the second definition, okay, very quickly. So, Rafael, can you please help me read the definition and the two examples? Thank you, Elio. An a non-defining relative clause gives optional information about the noun. Notice the use of commas. Mm -hmm. Seoul, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics, it's well known for its shopping. There are many temples and, and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Thank you very much, uh, Rafael. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the first one, right? So a defining. Remember, right, we are defining, meaning we are given important information about this particular, you know, clause. So a defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. Okay, that's what we have to remember whenever we use the word defining is because we're given essential information about it now or right um we give a definition or something that defines that particular noun new orleans is a city where people go to celebrate mardi gras now in that case it's something important um defining you know or or giving essential information about this city right which is new orleans salvador is famous for food and music that trace their origins to africa so salvador is famous for what for food and music uh -huh, okay that trace their origins to africa now 
Salvador, by the way, it's a city in um, Brazil, right? And there have been many, many booking mistakes, actually. Some people that were, you know, um, going to Salvador are sent to El Salvador, the country, instead of Salvador, the city in Brazil, right? So there are many complaints about people booking, you know, flights and getting the wrong uh, city, the wrong country, right? And I guess, and I bet the opposite happens as well. People going, coming to El Salvador that are sent to Salvador, Brazil. <laughs> and then we have the second definition, right? And in this case, we're talking about non-defining relative clauses. Listen to that non-defining relative clauses gives optional. So that's the difference between the two of them. The first one, the defining one, gives essential information. The non-defining relative clause gives optional information about a noun. And notice the use of commas. Generally, guys, we're, when we are given extra information, we tend to include that in between commas, meaning that it's information that I ins in, uh, insert there just for me to give, you know, something extra that it's not, you know, something um, essential, but I need the other person to know about that. About that. So... Which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics is well known for its shopping. There are many temples and shrines in Kyoto, which used to be the capital of Japan. Now, if you see, the two sentences can stand without that information in between commas. Seoul is well known for its shopping. And actually, I would have a sentence that can stand on its own, right? But I also can include that Seoul, Seoul, I'm sorry, which hosted the 1988 Summer Olympics is well known for its shopping, meaning that the information that I have in between commas is optional. Now, take a look at the second one. There are many temples and shrines, and shrines in Kyoto, comma, which used to be the capital of Japan. Actually, that which used to be the capital of Japan is just additional information. I mean, I just can understand the sentence just by saying there are many temples and shrines in, in shrines in Kyoto, right? I mean, I can understand it and I can transmit, you know, that message to the other person, but then I add something extra. Okay, now, um, what the lady or what the instructor in the video explains, right, is that whenever we um, build defining relative clauses, right, they add information about a noun or a noun phrase okay so take a look at the example she ex she explains you know in the platform people like to go to restaurants that have good food so tell me guys that have good food what is the noun that i'm modifying with that information i'm giving extra information about what About what? In this that case? Have good food. Yeah, but I'm giving that information about what? About the, uh, the restaurant. Exactly. I'm giving the information about the restaurants. Okay, so actually, this is the noun or noun phrase, but as it says there, Noun or noun phrase, in this case is a noun, right? And I'm giving extra information that have good food. I mean, I'm giving uh, more information about the restaurants. People like to go to restaurants that have good food, okay? Now, people like to go to restaurants, and then I specify what type of restaurants people like to go to. The ones that have good food, Okay, so whenever, you know, we give information that it's important, right, for the listener to understand my message, that is going to be a defining relative clause. Now, what happens with the non-defining relative clauses? She provides three different, you know, um, points or 
uh, information that we can use in order to identify them, right? So it says that they also describe nouns, which is true because I'm, I'm given information about a noun. Then second, she says that the information we give is not essential. So actually it's optional. And number three, they are set off by comma. Set off means separate, right? Uh, then that restaurant, which has good food, is the most popular one in town. So if you see the information that is between commas, it's not essential and it's extra. That restaurant is the most popular one in town. I just can say that and that's going to be all, all right. But no, I want this person to know, right, that this restaurant has good food. So that restaurant, which has good food, is the most popular one in town. So there you have, right? So what can we summarize from this? Well, that one gives essential information, the other one gives, you know, uh, optional information. And here in the manual, if you go to your manual, you will be able to find this information that I'm looking at on page number 19, page number 19 on your manual, okay? Now, let's take a look in here. A defining relative clause defines or gives essential information about a noun. The examples are different, only the examples. The May Won Don area has dozens of shops that sell the latest fashions. The spring and fall are the seasons where most people come to visit, right? Then we have the examples for the non-defining relative clause, which gives information about a noun and cannot begin with the pronoun that. It cannot begin with the pronoun that. Notice the use of commas. The restaurants here stay open until midnight. When, I think it's, when many locals are still enjoying, enjoying dinner, right? Beijing has many popular tourist attractions, which include the Great Wall of China, right? So in the two cases, I'm giving extra information about you know, those particular nouns. For example, in the first one, when many locals are still enjoying dinners. So what are we what are we talking about? We are talking about the restaurants. The restaurants, okay, um, here stay open until midnight when many locals are still enjoying dinner. Beijing has many popular tourist attractions, tourist attractions, which include the Great Wall of China. Right? So that's what we have to pay attention to. Remember that when we have classes, guys, eh, prácticamente pues son oraciones adicionales. O sea, son dos oraciones en uno, right? So um, let me see if I can give you a list. Give me a moment. Let's see if I can get you a list. Uh, okay, it says here we usually use a relative pronoun, right, uh, to the, to introduce the final relative clauses, right. So, and I'm going to give you a website where you can go and visit, right, and look for more information. For example, I'm going to I'm going to share with you this one. If you wanna click. Ah, hola, Jensi. Perdón, hasta ahorita veo su, su mensaje. No se preocupe, ya la agrego ahí. So there you have one website. I think there are more. Let me see. Here we have the other one. The second one. And I think this one is going to be okay.
Ah, okay, this one. This one is está super genial este website. Okay, so there you have. Guys, I'm going to also share. I'm going to share the this info in the chat. Give me a sec. Let me see, here you are. Y ya después de esto pasamos al ejercicio 3.2, right, Eliu? Okay, va, ah, perfect. I'm just yeah. going to share, perfect. Let me see if I can send this info here so you can have it. That's the first, uh, the first one. Okay. Okay, bye. So first, we were saying that these are the defining and non-defining relative clauses, right? So what happens with the differences? There you have the differences. Also, it's important to know, guys, that we use relative pronouns. Usamos relative pronouns, ¿verdad? And I know that you need to read, hay que leer, ¿verdad? Para que ustedes puedan como tener una mejor idea de cómo usar los relative pronouns, okay? So if you see, take a look at the website, please. Okay, there you have relative pronouns que son who, which, and whose, right? We, we used those three, who, which, and whose. Okay, and it gives you like a long explanation and very useful about the two clauses, right? So in the defining relative clauses, what happens? Look at the picture that I sent through chat, through WhatsApp. It says no commas in the defining clauses. No commas, necessary information, essential to distinguish which thing or person we are talking about. I called my brother who lives in Ontario. Probably I have four brothers, but I called the one who lives in Ontario, right? Um, I have more than one brother and I called that one that lives in Ontario, right? Also, it says we can use that, right? Uh, we can use that instead of who and which, okay? And also, uh, relative pronouns can be omitted. Aquí sí pueden ser omitidos. For example, we can omit who, which, and that when they are followed by subject and verb. For example, do you like do you like this song that I wrote? So, en vez de decir todo eso, usted puede decir, do you like the song I wrote? Right? Uh, that's the man uh, that I like, or that's the man I like. Creo que ese cuadrito que les mandé a WhatsApp está pero perfecto because I think it, it's, uh, you can understand it better, ¿ok? Yes, it is. ¿Verdad? Ok, bye. Entonces, cuando hablamos de defining y non-defining relative clauses, ¿verdad? Tenemos, dijimos ahí, esos relative pronouns. ¿Cuáles son los relative pronouns que vamos a estar trabajando en la lista? Si usted se fija, bueno, le voy a pasar esta también porque está la segunda. Let's see, le voy a pasar esta relative pronouns y le voy a mandar lo que sigue después ok, que es esto give me a second I'm going to share it with you Right. So as you can see there we have the relative clause I mean the relative pronouns que son who, which Whose, right? I can go ahead and um, use, you know, um, those uh, relative pronouns. Pero si ustedes se fijan, verdad? Eh, whenever we are talking about relative clauses, estamos usando where, verdad? Estamos usando when, that, etc., etc. Not specifically only those. Actually, we include uh, more information, right? Uh, we use relative adverbs. Okay, se lo voy a pasar acá. Oops, creo que les pasé la misma again, pero um, Vamos a poner la información que les tenía que poner. Bye, bye. Sí, entonces también podemos usar relative adverbs, right? And those relative adverbs are the ones that you see there. Algunos son los que estamos viendo ahorita, right? Que son when, where. ¿Verdad? Eh, which, etc. Entonces, acá los más comunes, as you can see, es that, when, 
which, okay, etc. Now let's move to the other half to the other section, right? What happens? What happens with non-defining relative clauses? With non-defining relative clauses, we can uh, um, find the find them in between commas. So it it means that that information you can put it there in case you want to add it. My brother who lives in Ontario is older. So I have only one brother and I'm just mentioning that he lives, he lives in Ontario, right? Uh, we cannot use that. Ahí con las non-defined relative clauses no podemos usar that, okay? And also relative pronouns cannot be omitted. En esta no podemos omitir los relative pronouns. For example, they introduced me to John who I liked immediately. I cannot say they introduced me to John, to John, huh? I liked immediately. I cannot say that, okay? Because I need the word who, okay? This is, that will be a little bit of the information that we have there. Now, let's move on to the, um, to the um, platform, okay? And let's go ahead and take a look at the exercise that we have here. I'm going to close some of the things that I don't need. There we go. There we go. Okay, so it says 3.2, knowledge check, right? Instructions, read the following sentences. Identify the relative clause. Then rewrite the same sentence, add commas where necessary. Remember, capital letters and periods. Okay, very good. So let's take a look at the first one. I think that you sent us a screenshot, Elio, with the first one that I think you were able to, um, to complete it, right? So we have two sentences here. I mean, we have uh, the information here. It says Bangkok, which is the capital, capital of Thailand, has many excellent restaurants and markets. Okay, so what do we have to do here? ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Solo identificar, chicos, right? Eh, the relative clause, and if it's defining or non-defining. Okay, ¿cómo nos quedaría la primera? Bangkok, mm -hmm. comma, mm -hmm. which is the capital of the Thailand, comma, mm -hmm. has many excellent restaurants and markets. Correct, very good. Excellent, right? So actually, that's the information that I need here, right? It says Bangkok, which is the capital, I mean, comma, over here, comma, which is the capital of Thailand, ha, comma, has many excellent restaurants and markets, right? Good. What about number two, right? Number two says... Hong Kong was a British colony until 90, 1997 when it was returned to China. So, what do you think uh, it's where we need to include those commas or that comma? Hong Kong mm -hmm. was a British colony until 1997, mm -hmm. comma. Mm -hmm. when it was returned to China. Very good, exactly, right? So in this case, pretty much um, we have extra information, but that extra information is after, you know, the, the year Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997. Until there, my sentence is okay, but then I come and I give, you know, um, probably extra info that it's not important, right? So when it was returned to shine. What about number three? Same thing. Lo mismo. Now let's look for the place where we're going to place. It. Let's look for the position where, where we are going to place the comma. I'm sorry. Uh, Busan. Busan is a busy. Mm -hmm. Or city, comma, that is located in South Korea. Exactly, right? So in that case, right, we're going to have it like this. Uh, I think it's Busan is a busy port city, comma, that is located in South Korea. Very good. Excellent. What about the next one, number four? Number four? 
Any ideas? Ah, it's Bogota, ¿verdad? Bogotá. Do we have one comma? Do we have two? Do we have um, um, a relative class over there? Any ideas? I try. Go ahead, Rosa Maria. Bogota, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia, comma, has frequently changing weather. Okay, very good. There is just one comma missing there, okay? And it was the first comma, but other than that, Rosa Maria, it was great. Okay, so in this case, we have Bogota, comma, because there is where I begin with the extra information, but uh, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia, comma, has frequently changing weather, right? Because all of this, it's just, it's just extra. Bogota has frequently changing weather and it will be perfect, right? What about number five, number five? Montreal. Number five. Montreal is a so sophisticated city, comma, mm -hmm. where some for the best cuisine in Canada is found. Very good. Exactly. There we just need one comma, right? As you said before, right? Montreal is a sophisticated city. I'm sorry. Yeah. City, comma, where some of for the best cuisine in Canada is found. Muy bien. And so what about the last one? The last one. I think is mm -hmm. Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in Brazil, is also of the world's most popular cities. Very good. And where would you put the commas or the comma? Uh, Sao Paulo, comma. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think uh, one comma. You think only one comma is necessary. Uh, okay. Uh, no, uh, after Brazil. Another comma. Correct, exactly. That's right. So here we need two commas, right? The first one is after Sao Paulo, right? And then comma, which is the biggest city in Brazil. Comma is also one of the world's most popular cities. Very good. Excellent. Now let's go ahead and send it. And as you can see, all our answers are correct. So pretty much here you didn't to do I mean, you didn't have, I'm sorry, to do much. All what you have to do is to locate the place where the commas were needed, right? Why? Because through placing commas, you are able to identify where is the extra information and where is the necessary information, okay? So do you have questions? Which are the number four? I need to check it because to me it's wrong okay i'm going to copy it over there in the chat please look at it and see if there is any any typo or any extra space uh, besides rafael anyone else that has questions O tal vez no en este ejercicio, tal vez en otro de los ejercicios. No hay ningún problema con gusto aquí, pues yo les contesto preguntas. It's okay, thank you. You're welcome, Rafael. Okay. Uh, the, sure. Dígame. Could you help me the number one, one point? Yes, yes, of course. Yes. Give uh -huh. me a second. Okay, ahorita. Let's see. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay, anyone else? Ahorita revisen para que este si hay algún problema, pues aquí les co le copio la que necesita. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if there are no questions, right? So let's go ahead and continue with the manual. Okay, let's go ahead and see. Ah, also, um, quiero ver si this puedo pasar algo más. Mm -hmm. That's a definition. I'm going to um, share with you another definition of defining and non-defining relative clause. Ahí está. Um, so let me see also over here. Um, no, I think we're okay with what I have already uh, shared. Just let me see. Um, Bueno, solo estoy ejemplos, nada más, quizás. Sí, only one more example. Aquí se lo voy a dejar, quiero ver si se puede. Ahí está. Ahí se lo dejé en el chat, pero de Zoom, ok? Bye. Entonces, let's continue, right, with the manual. If you see, look. Uh, that information is the same information that you have here. Los ejercicios que tienen aquí en el, en el manual no los realizamos en clase porque son los mismos ejercicios que ustedes, ¿verdad?, tienen ahí. Ahora bien, lo que vamos a hacer ahorita es identificar si es una defining o si es una non-defining relative clause, okay? So, let's go ahead and do something here. We're going to put it together, right? And we have the first sentence. Bangkok, which is the capital city of Thailand, comma, has many excellent restaurants and markets. Bangkok, comma, right? Okay, so this one is a defining or non-defining relative clause. What do you think? Defining or non-defining? <clears throat> non non-defining non relative clause? Correct, exactly. It's a non-defining relative clause. Why? Because number one, the information is between commas, right? The information is between commas and uh, also I'm giving additional information about it, right? So I'm going to share also this info here in the chat, look, so you can see the differences, right? And I'm going to make it bigger. So in the non-defining relative clauses, right, um, pretty much um, we separate, you know, the uh, relative clauses um, by commas. So if I see two commas, it means that there is a section of the clause that has been separated from the, from the, um, the whole thing and that that information can be optional. Okay, what about number two? Hong Kong uh, was a British uh, colony until 1997, comma, when it was returned to China. So do you think that is that a relative clause or, I mean, is that a defining clause or a non-defining relative clause? Non-defining clause. Non-defining, why? Because it's separate by comma. Okay, because it's separated by commas, he says. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the examples that we have here. So it says that from the very first chart that I share with you, right, it says uh, that non-defined relative clauses are in between commas. We cannot use that, right? And relative pronouns cannot be omitted, right? So let's go ahead and see. Um, Hong Kong was a British colony until 1997. That, no hay un that ahí, right? And also, uh, I cannot use that it was returned to China. Entonces, sí, as you said before, it's a non-defining relative clause. Good job. What about the next one? Um, I think it's this one, Busan 
is a bus busy port city, comma, right? That is located in South Korea. So what do you think, guys? Is this a relative? I mean, is a defining or non-defining relative clause? A non-defining relative clause? Yeah, based on what we were reading here, it's a non-defining, right? And, um, but what about the relative pronoun that I'm, I'm using? Because I'm using that. If the say you can learn non defining relative clauses, I cannot use that. So yeah, this is the thing. In the in the in the platform, it asks you to go ahead and um, use commas, right? But in the end, actually, it was not like uh, probably the challenge. The challenge was to identify if it was a relative or, or I mean, if, if it was a defining or non-defining relative clause. Si nosotros tenemos la oración, um, let me see. Busan is a busy port city that is located in South Korea, right? So the main sentence is Busan is a busy port city. That is, you know, uh, my main clause. And then the person says that is located in South Korea. Ok, si ustedes se van a la información que estoy moviendo en la, en la presentación, veamos la presentación. Bye. Dice acá, las defining relative clauses defines or gives essential information about an out. Si ustedes se fijan, chicos, las comas que les pedía en la plataforma no son las que ustedes estaban usando acá. Entonces, digamos que si estas oraciones yo las dejo tal cual están aquí, solamente incluyendo las comas para las, eh, esas oraciones que dan extra información, pero no para las otras, que son las defined, ¿verdad? Si yo digo, Busan is a busy port city that is located in South Korea. Do you think that, it, that the port, that, that the clause that is located in South Korea, it's important? Do you think is that, 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 that information is essential for me to understand? In my case, I think yes, because I never heard about Bosan. <laughs> exactly. That's totally right. Actually, that information is important because if someone tells me Busan is a busy port city, uh -huh, that is located in South Korea. Ah, okay. So now I understand what Busan is, as you said before, right? So if that is the case, right? I can say that that one is a defining relative clause. Porque aquí, allá dejando de lado ese ejercicio que la plataforma les pedía con las comas, si nosotros ponemos atención a los detalles, a, a cuál es cuál, ¿verdad? No me tengo que enfocar en sí en las comas. Las comas ahí van a estar, ¿ok? Si tengo dos, sí, porque yo sé que lo que está entre comas es lo que la información adicional que no es importante y que la puedo omitir. Pero aquí había un detalle que incluye that y las únicas que pueden incluir that son las defining relative clauses y también se puede omitir ese that de acuerdo entonces yo puedo decir um, Busan is a busy port city and is located in South Korea you can omit it and include something extra right but si yo la dejo tal cual Busan is a busy city is located in South Korea como que no mucho verdad Necesita el dat. What about Bogotá, comma, which is situated on a high plateau in central Colombia, comma, has frequently changing weather? What do you think? Is that a defining or non-defining relative clause? Non-defining. It's non-defining, right? Why? Because I have the information in between commas. Eso, it's too much info. I mean, um, Probably the person will know where, you know, Bogota is, right? Bogota, come out, and then all that info, I can omit it. I can say just Bogota has frequently changing weather. And people will probably look, understand where Bogota, I mean, what Bogota is and where it is located, right? Montreal, 
is a sophisticated city, comma, where some of the best cuisine. Uh, oh my goodness, I cannot see. Okay, Montreal, it's is a sophisticated city where some of the best cuisine in Canada is found. So what do you think? Is it defining or non-defining relative close? Anyone? Okay, I will help you with this one. This one is a defining relative clause. Why? Because I am talking, yes, I'm, I'm mentioning Montreal, but I'm giving information about the reasons why it is a sophisticated city, right? So I'm giving information, important information about this sophisticated city. So Montreal is a sophisticated city where some of the best cuisine in Canada, it's found. Esa información probablemente la persona no la va a saber, right? Entonces, it's important to mention that. Es importante que la otra persona lo sepa por si en dado caso quiere visitarlo, right? So, that will be a defining relative clause, right? Then, Sao Paulo, which is the biggest city in Brazil, is also one of the world's most populated city. Now, acá en la plataforma les decía Sao Paulo, coma, which is the biggest city in Brazil, coma, is also one of the world's most popular cities. So what do you think? Is that a defining or non-defining relative close? The information is between commas. Therefore, non-defining. It's a non-defining. That's totally right. Okay. But don't worry, guys. I mean, tomorrow I'm going to bring probably more exercises so we can practice a little bit more with defining and non-defining relative clauses. But for now, I need to, you know, to finish with the class. I'm going to pass the attendance and tomorrow we are going to continue. Así que, let me go ahead and mention the names. Alba Dir Portal Díaz. Here. Thank you, Alejandra Elizabeth Mendoza Arias. Hey, Ana Francisca Garcia Nieto. Present teacher. Thank you, Claudia Marcela Linares Urquía. Present. Thank you, Diego Anthony Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Eliu Fuentes Velarde. Present. Thank you, Erasmo Perla Mendoza. Present teacher. Thank you, Francisco Antonio Sánchez Jovel. And Jaime Dagoberto Barrera Guzmán. Present. Thank you, Jose Carlos Rodríguez Linares. Uh, give me a second. Um, Jose Francisco Peña Peña. Jose Isaías Portillo Ramos. Present teacher. Thank you, Jose Jovito Torres Amaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Mayra Lorena Portillo de Perla. Present teacher. Thank you. Eh, María Susena Ayala de Flores. Marvin Joseph Salazar Alas. Present teacher. Thank you, Nady Ives Mendez Albeño. Present teacher. Thank you, Rafael Antonio Morales Martinez. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Antonio Melendez Morales. Present. Thank you, Rodrigo Daniel Melendez Mayen. Present. Thank you, Rosa Maria de Milagro Perez de Paz. Present. Thank you, Sandra Patricia Merino Moreno. Present. Thank you, Jensi Marlene Lo Leon Lopez. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Sulma Beatriz Pere Caldames. Present. Thank you. Okay, Alejandra, Elizabeth, no se preocupe, aquí le arreglo yo la lista, lo de la lista. Así que, guys, I'm going to stop here, but thank you very much for joining. Have a good evening, well, a good night. And please, if you have questions about e-exercises, don't forget to um, uh, just let me know the number, and I will go ahead and help you tomorrow, okay? So, good night, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Good night.